what is up guys this is Tiro back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and with another custom ROM of course and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Lineage OS 17 on this device so how is the ROM well the fingerprint scanner as you just saw is working pretty much but I can say that it the fingerprint scanner is working 6 out of 10 times here it is not like 10 out of 10 so let me switch to the settings panel and show you guys what else are inside the about section if you go into the android version you will see the android version is 10 of course let me increase the brightness just a little bit so here the android version shows as android 10 of course and you can do these kind of stuff as you can see so it just plays kind of here the lineage os version shows as 13th october 2019 lineage os 17 unofficial build of course and the security patch level is October 5th, 2019. And here's the vendor security patch level and stuff. If you wanna see Google Play system update version 10, stock kernel is perf kernel over here. And the build date again, 13th October, 2019. So let me go back and go to the system. If you will find all the customizations in the system panel because this is Lineage OS. So if you go into the updater, yes, the updater is there, but I'm not quite sure if the updater actually will work when there is a new update. And the developer option, if you go there, you will find this advanced reboot option. So yeah, that's a good thing that whenever you have enabled this advanced restart, if you tap and hold the power button and tap on restart, you will see direct rebooting option to system and recovery and the fast boot as well. Let me go back. If you go into the buttons, you will have the invert layout and stuff if you are using the like normal buttons of Android, the on-screen buttons. And if you go into the power menu, we have the screenshot option and there is long press for torch. Let me show you. If I long press the power button, as you can see, the torch is on. So long press for torch is actually working. So as you can see, the fingerprint scanner did not work now. Let me try it again. So it worked now. And you have to just like to unlock with this fingerprint scanner on this ROM. Let me show you, you just have to like press and hold for a little bit longer so that your fingerprint gets detected and your device will be unlocked and in the status bar we have the quick pull down the network traffic indicator although i'm using this other app for like monitoring the internet speed but that works too in the system icons we have the headset bluetooth etc icons and over here there is no vaulty icon but vaulty calling is working and as well as the like call recording options are there so you don't need to worry about vaulty calling or call recording either in the clock position we have the clock position center right and left option you can choose like whatever you like as you can see right now the clock is on the center so yeah both works like three of them works and show seconds option is there if you are really into it and AM PM style is there you can choose it to be small or large or like normal I mean then we have the battery icon style then you can choose it to icon portrait circle and text no big dotted circle or something are present over here now we have the battery percentage option well I'm using it from that battery settings not from here but this one works too I think now moving on to the most amazing feature of Lineage OS which is the like brightness slider then auto brightness toggle and the brightness control from the status bar. So this one is really working amazingly well as you can see. You can just swipe left or right on the status bar to increase or decrease the brightness. So that is a really great thing that this feature is there and it is working flawlessly here. So no complaints I have regarding the brightness over here or the gestures. And if you go into the normal gesture settings, then if you go into the system navigation gestures, you will have this gesture navigation, the two button navigation and the three button navigation. All the options are there, although I'm using the full screen gestures and it has been working fine. Now, let me show you the stock launcher. This is the stock launcher. Of course, this is the trebuchet launcher. If you go into the apps info, it will show you trebuchet launcher. So not much customizations are there. If you go into developer settings, you will find some customizations. But let me show you by going back. There is no double tap to sleep or stuff in the home screen. But you do have the Google Now cards to the left. And also we have the like swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get to the quick settings panel or the notification panel. So this works flawlessly. Now let me show you more things in the settings. If you go into battery settings, we have the battery percentage. Talking about the battery life, well, this is amazing. I have got about six plus hours of screen on time with like 40% juice left on the battery. So that is a really amazing battery life. I would say it can definitely give you like seven plus or like eight plus hours of battery life if you are like not heavily using the device. So that is really great. And one thing in the display settings that night light and stuff, everything is working as you can see. 
let me go back and in the live display yes the live display is there you can adjust the colors and stuff of the whole screen if you are really into it let me move down and dark theme is there if you are really into like whole amulet type of display yes i have been using this dark theme all the time but i just switched it off to like shoot this video and the colors you have options for changing the screen colors you can put it to natural boosted or adaptive so that is a good thing and we have the full screen apps as you can see you can turn some full screen apps option and lock screen display well let me show you that there is the always on display but i'm not using it since let me like go to the lock screen and tell you why i'm not using it well this is how the ambient display works and like always on display is working super fine but the thing is with amoled you have to like have something on the display which is kind of moving which is why the miui is always on display kind of like moves the clock kind of moves any everywhere but here that's not the case everything stays on the lock screen at the same position this may cause into some burn in or something so that is the reason why i'm not using this always on display so you can definitely use it if you want to the fingerprint is not working one more time so i had to enter my pin the double tap to wake is there double tap to sleep on the status bar as i just showed you yes it is there you can disable wake up on plug so that is great and let me show you the sound settings quickly if you go into advanced there is this direct sound enhancer but if you tap on it it doesn't like work as you can see it the settings just like full stop so the direct option is there but it is not kind of working but let me tell you that there is this like audio fx option if you are really into it you can definitely use this audio fx for your headphones and speakers as well the speakers over here is pretty loud no issues whatsoever with the uh, like speakers and you can disable the touch vibration touch sounds charging sounds etc you can definitely disable these kind of things and vibrate for calls and stuff is there and this is how the volume panel looks like whenever you are connected to a bluetooth device it will show up up here and you can switch to like the device's own speaker or the bluetooth device's like headphone or something you can just switch between those now let's talk about the stock camera well the stock camera here is pretty simple this is the snapdragon camera and i am not using it now let me show you what i am using here well i have been using the anx camera here this is the anx camera version 152 so if you are flashing any anx camera make sure you are flashing 152 or above so this works fine even the wide angle camera here works flawlessly the normal camera the 48 megapixel normal camera works and then the 2x camera 2 works flawlessly here as you can see so no issues whatsoever even videos and stuff is working fine let me show you as you can see even the video mode is working fine with all the lenses and even front camera and stuff is working fine here as you can see the camera just popped up so everything is fine unless you switch to the portrait mode if you switch to the portrait mode it will crash the camera as you can see it says can't connect to camera then if you want to open the camera again you have to close it from memory then reopen it again so yeah on the nx camera except for the portrait mode everything is working now let's talk about the gcam 7 yes the gcam 7 is working fine too here as you can see i have the gcam 7 and if you want this gcam 7 for your redmi k20 pro or redmi note 7 pro or even the redmi note 5 pro you can click on the card over here and get this like gcam 7 for your device and this is working fine even with the video mode portrait mode night sight everything is working fine here with this gcam 7 no issues whatsoever so camera is not a problem here if you are like into really some kind of tweaking here and there now let's talk about the performance well the performance has been really great in this rom no issues that i could see no random reboots or stuff like that at all Generally, performance while opening apps or like switching between apps just like this is like pretty fine no issues at all and if you are into like google pay and something i would say that the banking apps is not working i have tried like setting up google pay so it does not work by default at least but you can get it to work by disabling the phone and sms app permission from the google play services so yeah that's a kind of like workaround you have to do if you want to use google pay now let's talk about the refresh rate kind of thing while opening all the apps from memory so as you can see all the apps do stay in memory and it is like super fluid the experience over here is like super smooth no issues whatsoever with the like app switching or app opening with the ram management i mean so i don't have any issues regarding the app opening up speeds or the like app open up animations or apps getting removed from memory that is not simply happening over here so that's a great thing 
Now let's talk about again the refresh rate of the screen. Well, I'm stuck into 60 Hz because I have tried flashing the 81 Hz and even the 72 Hz mod for Android Q. Both did not work on this like ROM at least. Uh, if I flash the like 81 Hz or the 72 Hz mods with the Orange Fox recovery, well, the display kind of getting stuck into some 3540 FPS or 3540 Hz. So yeah, it's kind of slowing it down. But I can say that it, we may get the mods like working in the future. But as of right now, if you are into flashing some display mods or if you are into overclocking the display, well, that is not possible in this ROM at least. So that's how it is. And in terms of gaming performance, let me show you by opening PUBG. And here is the Android score of this ROM. And on this ROM, the DRM info shows as level one. So that's a good thing that you can stream Netflix and Amazon Prime videos in 1080p, I guess, but I don't have a subscription for that. So I could not test it. So by default, PUBG sets the graphics itself to like high and the PUBG is like on full screen. So no issues whatsoever with the full screen. And if you go into settings, then graphic settings, you can play on extreme settings, even with like HDR. So no issues whatsoever with the settings over here. As you can see, we can play to the max settings to HDR and extreme, but there is no ultra HD. It is coming soon, it says. So yeah, let me start a TDM and show you guys like how is the performance. So let me be precise about the flashing procedure of this ROM if you're coming from MIUI. So once if you are in MIUI, you have to flash the Orange Fox recovery. And after you have done that, you have to format the data. So once you have formatted the data with the Orange Fox recovery, just flash this ROM file, then flash the gapps file. Then also you need the DM Verity F script disabler file. So after you have flashed everything, you will be like booted into the system and you will be decrypted. So yeah, if you want to be decrypted, flash that fcrypt disabler. Otherwise, you can like leave the fcrypt disabler and flash the ROM and gapps and get encrypted. So in terms of digital usage and performance and gaming performance, battery life, customizations, everything, the ROM is like fairly good in my opinion. And this is still an unofficial ROM or beta ROM you can call. So yeah, I think this is a pretty great ROM to try, but do be aware about the situation on the fingerprint scanner. It is not great at all. So the fingerprint scanner may annoy you a lot. So be careful about that. That's the only bummer that I could find in this ROM. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tiro from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.